हेलो 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 अस्सलाम वालेकुम जी आया नू पखेरा अगले नी हाउ चुन शुमे वश मले ओ हाय गुंजाइमस गुटन मॉर्गन ओला बोंजो पीवी एट कैफाल हाल शुम चतोरे आलन वसालन مرحبا एंड अ वेरी अमेजिंग गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरीबॉडी हु इज ट्यून इन टू पीडीबी वर्ल्ड एंड आई वाचिंग वर्ल्ड दिस मॉर्निंग अलोंग साइड महा मखदूम and shahzad khan hello maha how are you today hello shahzad assalam alaikum everyone i am good today i'm excited yeah. that the week has started and i'm also uh, kind of scared of the week starting because time is flying we're already in the second week of may i mean i don't know what's going on how are you shahzad well i'm very excited you know uh, because the fact is that ladies and gentlemen okay we have it actually made it a public mm. uh, announcement as well that you know i'll actually be off i'll be yes. uh, going for a little time yeah now finally shahzad will be taking some uh, time uh, yeah, off and, and i'm happy time. for that too <laughs> as well so i'm just counting my days cuz yeah. i'll be i think inshallah leaving on the 19th or the 20th mm. so you know while i'm gone please be very kind to my co-host as yes, well and absolutely. you be kind to all of those people will, who are out there i will try but we will miss you like i'm actually oh, quite you. apprehensive of you leaving but it will be fine and we have one full shows line up for you for that time as well however today we do also have another interesting show for you it's just a general chit chat about how we can prepare ourselves for a very special upcoming event exactly. and also before we start a conversation i think we should get started with the news yes i think that's what we need to do so let's go ahead uh, ladies and gentlemen and check out the top stories good morning i feel fresh Immigration, cultural diversity and identity are at the heart of this work by Senegalese artist Alion Badara Sar whose painting exhibited at this year's Dark Art Biennale. And superheroes and mythological creatures are guarding a Cusco wetland and drawing hundreds of delighted visitors characters from guardians of the galaxy the lord of the rings and a bevy of unidentified fantasy beings are scattered throughout the hasao park as enormous sculptures made of natural material i think one of this is root right root yeah yeah i lo- i love root mm. Lo- root sacrifices his life oh too. god don't ruin it for people <laughs> no no not this one even in the previous oh, one oh that's root not or root. or alright moving on ladies and gentlemen where federal areas clinched pakistan cup one day cricket tournament title after beating Khyber Pakhtunkhwa by 5 wickets in final at Iqbal Stadium Faisalabad which is said to be my village though uh, unfortunately i never have been to my village which oh is gosh. somewhere around Faisalabad all right ladies Excellent. and gentlemen so these were the top stories and now time to move on to what what we will be talking about yes so ladies and gentlemen i think every household and every mother every father every kid is actually preparing for the divine month which is about to come and the name is ramazan itself and Absolutely. we are very excited because you know it is followed by eid when i used to be young mm. you know i was always after counting how much eid i will probably get i think get. we still are i think on every show we have <sighs> eid from our guests yeah but request. you know it's just on the show because when we go back get back home you know now we are father now we are mamus chachus and what not so we actually have to be on the Absolutely. other side of the picture we're just lending our money yes. but this festivity of eid is after those 30 days where we fast where we seek for forgiveness mm. and where we want to help people but Absolutely. it's yep. not just going to be for mo- one month mm. it's going to be it should be for the whole year yes exactly so we will be discussing today how can we prepare for the month of ramazan and not just you know what can we do regarding the charity work we're doing but also internally how can we can reflect on ourselves and also be more uh, fruitful in and everyone venture that we take part in however um you know with the use of today i feel like the we you know the youngsters get a really bad kind of uh, reputation during this month because you know people always say that they they're always diverted the attentions are here and there however what we've seen especially on the show is that every year we invite wonderful youngsters on our show who are doing great work especially during the month of ramazan and even we had MASF who now have gone beyond pakistan are also going to be working for ramazan you know giving food for iftari and uh, sari in saudi arabia and places wow that's is cool and then even at the same time you know a lot of people are looking forward to you know uh, going out there and mm. giving their zakat to whoever they think is needy mm. so what we can do is probably you know if we get together on a bigger platform and if we gather all of that zakat that i i think that will probably help somebody to probably have another business of their own mm. you know because we 
Pakistan is actually ranked number one, being the most philanthropic country all across the globe as well. So other than philanthropic, Zakat is a first. Mm -hmm. And when it's a first, we obviously have to do it. But if we do it in a larger number with people, I think we'll be able to help some people settle down in their lives. Absolutely. And so to discuss how the youngsters can play their role and how they should prepare for it, we've been joined by some wonderful guests in the studio. Uh, we've been joined by Ayab Ahmed. He is the Youth Minister for Foreign Affairs. as Good morning. Thank, Thank you. Morning. Thank you for joining us. Besides Ayab, we've been joined by Bilal Keta Mughal, who is a Quran teacher. as Good morning. And Thank it's just so superb to see somebody so young to be a Quran teacher. It's Absolutely. Just, it just makes me proud of a hair within mm. my own heart. And, you know, for all those people who are out there. But before mm. we talk about Ramadan, there's just one more thing. Please. Which I wanted to touch upon very quickly. And I have this was for you that I actually saw post where the Youth Assembly called upon DG ISPR Asif Ghafoor Saab. You guys went over there to the ISPR's office. What were the topics which were discussed? Uh, you know, uh, at the first, uh, DG ISPR, our, our delegation from a whole Pakistan, from Balochistan, Sindh, and other provinces, Punjab, KPK, uh, it was a delegation of more than 100 youth. Uh, we all participated there, and DGISPI, you know, he basically uh, uh, presented us some documentaries on patriotism <laughs> and, uh, you know, some anti-state elements that are active right now these days against Pakistan, which are generating the fifth generation war, you, you yeah. know about that. Uh, so uh, DGISPI basically briefed us, like, how uh, the youth can take part in uh, some positive activities to portray the positive image of Pakistan all over the world and uh, how the National Youth Assembly can uh, focus uh, towards, you know, these anti-state elements so that we can prevent the fifth generation war wow. that Pakistan is going right now. And this is what brings me to, you know, uh, bring me back to the topic where you said that you youth needs to know their role. Now, mm -hmm. even other than that, you know, when, whenever it's Ramadan, we have this very amazing spiritual feeling within our old cells mm -hmm. and, you know, we feel very lightened and light at heart and, you know, as if, you know, we're full of noor and whatnot. So what, how do you think that the youth relates to Ramadan and then all of those activities which they went through or probably underwent? The youth can do, do uh, very positive activities, uh, like for example, uh, uh, my organization, <laughs> National Youth Assembly. Mm -hmm. What we do is last year we, uh, you know, uh, uh, distributed the whole food packages. Uh, uh, we uh, went the whole of the Pakistan. We distributed more than uh, uh, 3,000 food packages to different families, wow. different poor families. And this time we are planning something more big. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are trying for 5,000. And you know, uh, we don't take uh, charities from uh, different people. It's us, um, you know, uh, we selflessly do it. We do it from ourselves. Like the whole of the members, we have actually 40,000 members all over the Pakistan. So we, all the members, we basically join our hands together and we do it like this excellent wow. okay so now let's move on to Bilal uh, you know we're talking about Ramadan and how one should be feeling uh, but there's one question that you know I guess we've been asked to ask quite a few times but what does um, Ramadan mean for the youth of today do they still have that connection with the religion especially with all this evolution and well to my uh, interaction with the various youth that I have mm -hmm. especially through my uh, courses through my classes and I myself am a student of Quran mm. and the youth that I have interacted with the way I've seen is that religion and Islam mm. to them it's become something that's cultural okay. it's something that they do not because uh, they have an innate desire mm -hmm. it's something that uh, is rooted from their uh, parents it's something that's rooted from their society mm -hmm. and therefore they themselves are lacking in the exact requirement of knowledge in order to complete their uh, innate practice. Okay. All right. So therefore, to your answer of what Ramazan mm. is for these people, of course, it's a month of uh, ibadah. Mm. It's a month of worship. But the thing is that the uh, desire there to act on that worship, to do that in practice, is somewhat missing. Okay. All right. So, so you very w rightly pointed out that they, you know, lack the knowledge. Yes. And this is where you step in because you're a Quran student and a Quran teacher yourself. So, you know, be, since you're very knowledgeable for that and in those terms, please let us know and spread. Let's just share the knowledge with all those people who are out there. So how do we actually need to feel about it? Yeah, how do we connect? How do, you, how do we step away from the fact that it's more of a, you know, turning into a cultural tradition yeah. and keeping it linked with Or the people religion. just asking other people, oh, you have to keep your prayer, you have to keep You know, it's, it's bigger than that. Yeah. Well, the first step I think we should take, that every Muslim should take, is that they should come closer to the Quran and Sunnah. Okay. Yeah. That we find from Hadith that Allah says that if you just walk towards me, mm -hmm. I will run towards you. Okay. 
And if ever anyone wants <coughs> any form of information, they have the Quran. Mm. Yeah. They have the Ahadith. They can just simply read it. They can get it through deep understanding. And if they feel as though they need more, then they can go online. You know, mm. we're in a world digital age. Mm. You're surrounded by information. You can receive it. It's just one click away. Absolutely, that's a very fair point. Uh, but now, um, let us bring AR back into the conversation. You know, the information, you guys are doing things with you know, the organization you're, you're kind of participating in. But going forward, how would you, especially being part of a larger organization connected to 40,000 individuals, how do you spread the message and you know, make sure that this is actually you know, something that it, there's a connection to it, there's an understanding of why we're doing these things or why you guys are making sure you're assisting and aiding other people through this time? Uh, you know, before uh, we arranged the sessions and uh, in, in the parliamentary sessions in Ramadan, mm. uh, you know, we spread our message. Like, uh, for example, uh, this time uh, uh, during the first week of Ramadan, we'll spread the message of uh, uh, like how the youth can change in in the month of Ramadan mm. and uh, how they can, uh, you know, uh, stay sustained after the after the month of Ramadan. Like during Ramadan, uh, basically the main message this time we will give is like. Uh, instead of getting closer to the mobile phones, we should get close to the Quran. Mm. And instead of, uh, you know, uh, getting closer to the restaurants and cafes, we should uh, get, get close to uh, Salah, Namaz. Mm. And um, the second thing is, like, you know, uh, there's a Hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, if you get to know that how good month of Ramadan is for you, you wish that a whole year should be the month of Ramadan. Mm. So basically, you know, uh, main motto, main message in this month of Ramadan is like, uh, ask for forgiveness and uh, uh, pray as much as you can. For example, I'm giving you an example. Sure. Uh, a bank calls you, yeah, they're saying that uh, we are going to open a bank vault and uh, two hours, uh, we're giving you two hours, you can take whatever you want to take yeah. in these two hours. Obviously, you'll first, uh, you know, uh, you, it, it'll be a big smile on your face and you'll say that I, I should grab all the things in that two hours. Same is the case here. Allah first things first, bro. Diamonds and then gold <laughs> and then money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Set your priorities. <laughs> so Allah, you know, the same is the case here. Yeah. Allah opens up the open up, uh, you know, the world, mm -hmm. and He says that take whatever you want to take from here. Yeah. Is the month of Ramadan. Exactly. So basically, we should, you know, pray as much as we can and help the needy, help the poor. So this is the basic. That that the was Ramadan. definitely a good example, and this is how uh, you know anybody can actually look at the picture. But other than that, now what I want to discuss over here is since you said that this year around you're going to give away messages that be more closer to Quran and Sunnah than to be your cell phone. Mm -hmm. Now it brings me to a point where I need to ask you, what are those reasons with, with which or due to them, you know, that the youth is actually distracted from the deen? So can, can we narrate a few reasons that, you know, okay, it's not just cell phones though, because they use cell phone for good purposes. If you're not going to share this with these 13 people, mm -hmm. you'll probably just die. So, so, you know, I think we need to get out of these th type of things too as well. So let's start with Bilal. Um, before I, like, obviously there aren't exact specific reasons yeah. you can pick for that can be generalized to everyone. Mm -hmm. So therefore, before I say the reasons, I'd like to talk a bit about what is the point of Ramazan. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, before we take any initiative, we always have an end goal in mind. Mm -hmm. And the end goal in mind for whenever we enter this month should be first and foremost to increase our Iman. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then to increase our taqwa and then finally to obtain forgiveness of our, all our gunah. Mm. So therefore, if we do want to look at specific reasons as to why the youth find it difficult, it has to be one of these three. Mm -hmm. Ramazan comes when we are at a shortage of our iman. Mm -hmm. As to daily lives, to have that belief in our hearts, it will after some time depreciate. Mm -hmm. As the Prophet wasallam, he gave the example of a shirt. Mm -hmm. That when you have a shirt, the more you use it, the more it's going to get worn out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same is the thing with our iman. Mm. The more we use it, the more we use it in our daily lives, the more it will decrease. Yeah. And Ramazan is a sort of a month to recharge it all. Okay. And if the youth have some problem that they want to exactly specify what they're doing wrong, mm -hmm. how can I fix on it or how can I build upon it, then there are various tests. There's a psychological test known as the uh, feedback analysis. Mm -hmm. Where what you do is uh, you grab a piece of paper mm -hmm. and you write down a goal. You can write down that in the next week, I'm going to uh, read the Subha Sham Duas in the morning and in the nights. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you make that goal. And you try your complete to the fullest to get that done. Mm -hmm. And then after one week, you write down what actually happened. Okay. And if you were not able to meet that goal, write down why do you think that did not happen. Mm 
Okay, interesting. Yeah, that is very good. good to reflect. This is feedback analysis. Mm. And you give your own self a feedback, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. And, well, I don't know. I, I'm just very tricky with my own feedback. Mm. I just trick my brain into just celebrating and <laughs> happiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, this is, is what happens. Which, well, that's what it is. And this is why we have these shows as well, to mm. you know, figure out how can we make the most out of each kind of <coughs> uh, important occasion that comes throughout the year. But before we move on to a short break, uh, let me ask Ayab the same question. Uh, same question as Shazad, you know, there's a lot of distractions. I mean, Bilal has given us a very nice kind of summary of it, but let's try and break it down to these little things that distract us in the day-to-day -day life. How can we identify them so that during the month of Ramadan we're not, um, you know, led astray? You know, like Bilal said, uh, the basics, uh, you know, the basic pillar, taqwa and iman. Yep, we got that. Uh, there's a hadith mm -hmm. uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu that uh, after Iman, mm. the biggest deed, the righteous deed, is to help the mankind. Yeah. If we you know, spread these kind of messages, uh, like for example, you are spreading a good message in Ramadan, and we, uh, the different platforms of the youth, if we spread these kind of messages, like what is the basic uh, thing that can motivate the youth towards the right side, so we can, uh, you know, what we can do is we can uh, change the minds of the youth fr mm. from that uh, Okay, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm going to interject that. And I just want to ask you, okay, now we're talking about, um, you know, keeping people on the right side, but let's talk about, we're talking, for, actually, I feel we're talking from a very pri privileged point of view. Majority of people, you know, they struggle to get clean water, you know, three meals a day, um, you know, electricity, gas. When these are their main focus, you know, to feed their families and, you know, how are they supposed to kind of, keep the faith because that's when you're led astray. You know, when you're struggling and when you don't have the basic necessities, then you kind of turn to the wrong things in order to fill, fulfill your needs. How do we help that? Uh, in, right? in, the month of, in the month of Ramadan, you know, uh, w the basic message is to, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, uh, you know, the, the econ to, to economi economize your uh, spendings. Mm -hmm. So what we do is, like, uh, uh, if we uh, economize our spendings, mm -hmm. We should, uh, uh, to uh, you, you know, we should move to. Uh, you should put the spendings towards these people mm -hmm. to get them the clean water, to get them uh, the food, to, uh, to get them the uh, uh, food packages like we are doing. Mm -hmm. So this is my Hello. message. Well, uh, actually, I'd like to give an example from the times of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Please sure. do. Now, um, at those times, when especially when it became compulsory upon various amount of Muslims that they could no longer uh, drink they could no longer indulge in various haram activities. Mm -hmm. And the only form of, you could say, nourishment they had was water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at that time, water was not clean. Mm -hmm. The water that you would find, it was muddy. It was difficult to uh, completely clean it. Even by boiling, it was not 100% clean. And there were a lot of infections and diseases that would follow by. All mm -hmm. right. But still, the Prophet and the Sahaba, mm -hmm. they still engaged in using that form instead of actual haram activities. Okay. Right. So therefore, I don't want to say that Today, people are suffering, they were <coughs> suffering, then just deal with it. Mm. Obviously, yeah. people have problems today. Mm. But it, then you have to also focus on your deen. Mm. Right. And we find constantly in Islam, we constantly in Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the more you come closer to deen, it will not always be easy. Mm. Yeah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never leave your uh, good deeds wasted. Okay. Amazing. But one, one last thing, you know, uh, um, to wrap up the segment with, and it's a very interesting question, that is because the other day, I was sitting in front of television and I could see all the Ramzan transmissions, uh, you know, adverts being on aired on every other channel. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want to ask you guys is that, for example, for all those people throughout the year who have been, been dancing, who have been doing different commercials, soaps and whatnot, and selling things and giving people things and whatnot, yeah. all of a sudden come wearing shalwar kameez, wearing the cap on the hat, Muslim for a month, you know, all of those things. How do you guys feel when you see the same people doing Ramadan shows and being very religious and being in the act? How do you feel about it? Uh, okay. Um, Should we even have an opinion on yeah. it? What, what's I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just asking. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, 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 in, in a sense it's good also. Oh. Like, uh, you know, the whole year people are doing, uh, you know, the uh, morning shows and different stuff like that. Uh -huh. And in the month of Ramadan, it's basically the month of Hidayat. Yeah. So if a person, you know, he gets Hidayat, so that's a good thing. Yeah. But on the other hand, if we talk about Pakistan uh, recently, I think the Chief, Chief Justice, he also, you know, asked uh, in his... Uh, 
uh, some uh, uh, quote that uh, in, in the month of Ramadan last year, there were shows running uh, like this. And this time, I, w I would not be at these type of things. So, so let's see if there's a change or if not. A change. What do you say? Well, obviously, like Ramadan is a month of forgiveness. Yeah. Yes. And we find from various ahadiths that the Prophet ﷺ, he stressed upon the fact that if you ever come upon this month, you should focus first and foremost on getting your sins forgiven. Yeah. Mm. And I don't, and I won't like to discourage the fact that if someone is truly uh, not engaging in, let's say, mm. exceptionally good activities, but yeah. in Islam and during Ramadan, he does, mm. then I don't want to discourage that. Absolutely. But then again, a person should always have that niyat. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Niyat, yes. Exactly, it's your intentions as well. And also, you know, at the end of the day, you know, things that are promoting and highlighting the goodness and the positivity and the humanity of a religion, of a people, that can never be a bad thing. So yeah. Uh, and yeah, and, and the way I see it is that, you know, it's just because of you people who are out there that people like us actually get a chance mm -hmm. to probably just go through again and again to, from you know, whatever we want to do in our life and what Allah wants us to do. Exactly, and also it's, <laughs> now I feel like I'm defending <laughs> us doing our shares as well, but it's also about learning, isn't yeah, it? It's but on thank your you, shoulder yeah, now. Exactly, thank you so much for being here today. It's been an absolute pleasure having this discussion with you, you, and I'm sure we will see you during the month of Ramadan as well. Thank it's you all. so much. Well, you agree with Yeah, I will, I will. Uh, so, guys, with that, we're going to go for a short break, and when you come back, we're going to be highlighting some other youngsters who are doing some wonderful work within Pakistan. Let's go take a break. Brilliant. Good morning. Tent pegging is an equestrian sport practiced in many countries around the world. Wooden targets are placed on ground at a specific distance and players wearing traditional dress and turban have to run their horses and try to hit the target and pick it up with the lance. Target missing is considered as a failure. Tent pegging is thought to have originated in the subcontinent. Historians say that mounted soldiers would gallop to the enemy camp, removing the tent pegs with their lances and swords. They would be followed by more mounted soldiers who took advantage of the surprise and havoc caused by collapsed tents and a confused enemy. Today, tent pegging is practiced around the world, but is especially popular in Australia, India, Israel, Oman, Pakistan, South Africa and the United Kingdom. The Olympic Council of Asia included tent pegging as an official sport in 1982 and the International Federation for Equestrian Sports recognized it as an official equestrian discipline in 2004. After independence of Pakistan, the game came under cloud because of lack of state patronage, which ultimately diversified to more glitzy, more glamorous games like cricket and hockey. Public interest in the cities thus diverted these games of glamour, yet the landlords, bourgeois and the rural folk kept it alive. New and emerging national tent pegging associations have helped spread the sport's popularity. Players from Pakistan are now regularly participating in international tent pegging competitions and many of them have left indelible impressions by winning gold medals many a time. Passion for polo will be the highest on the world's highest polo ground. 
Chandur invites visitors to experience a traditional polo tournament between the teams of Chitral and Gilgit. The tournament is held on Chandur Pass, the highest polo ground in the world, at 3,700 meters above sea level. The first time a polo tournament took place on the Chandur Pass was in 1936. It is a place unique and exotic in itself, surrounded by some of the most spectacular mountain scenery in the world. The event marks the annual rivalry between the teams of Chitral and Gilgit. The polo tournament has some added attractions for the visitors, trout fishing at the nearby streams and lakes, and a festival of folk dances and music of northern Pakistan. The event in itself offers a fascinating insight into the lifestyle of the people of this region. Their culture and indigenous customs are a delight to behold for the visitors. Crystal clear lakes, snow-covered mountains, alpine flowers, and vast stretches of green grass are added attractions. Fairs and festivals of Pakistan. Welcome back everyone and before the break we were preparing ourselves mentally and our attention intentions for Ramazan uh, and what the youth are doing for uh, the months coming up but now yeah. another thing that we started re-highlighting are the youngsters that are achieving quite a lot in their day-to-day -day lives yes and uh, today ladies and gentlemen we have been joined with somebody who herself actually taught her own self to be a biotechnologist and then she made synthesized diesel from mango uh, peel and kernel and then she's uh, an entrepreneur and she's a principal too and she's actually looking into different ways into how to modernize our education system Absolutely. as well and without any further ado uh, let us just introduce to you this high achiever she's none other than Miss Amra Inam hello and she's an artist too hello assalamu alaikum how are you Wa alaikum salam alhamdulillah I'm good how are you Absolutely good, thank perfect you. thank you very much for joining us so first things first very high achieving yeah biotechnologist yeah. And you taught your own self how to be a biotechnologist. No. How did you do that? Self-taught artist yeah, okay. and biotechnologist uh, by qualification. Wow. Excellent. Uh, aren't you too young to be some in something like that? Uh, yeah, I feel so. <laughs> <laughs> by profession, I'm principal and I feel I'm young wow. enough for that. Wow. That was amazing. We were very impressed when we found out you I mean, I'm not principal. even the principal of my own self. <laughs> and she's like looking after so many kids at the same time. Exactly, wonderful. Okay, so tell us, how did you start, decide that you wanted to do so many different things? Um, I, 
actually, if I will tell you the truth, that mm. I never thought that I will be an artist. Mm. I never thought I will be principal. Mm. And I wanted to be a doctor. Okay. And I applied uh, like for the entry test for MCAT medical entry test, but I could not uh, pass that. Okay. And uh, sooner, like uh, I was uh, quite. Uh, in I was quite uh, disappointed with the results that I could not become a doctor mm -hmm. because I always had dreamed to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. Later on, I had enrolled myself in biotechnology as per my parents' advice, mm -hmm. and I did not uh, think about that as well. Mm -hmm. And I pursued my degree, and during my first semester, I uh, started feeling that um, like there is some artist inside me. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a very defined artist, mm -hmm. but it was a person who wants to do art. Okay. So I just uh, used to do that uh, um, art type stuff, sketching, painting mm. in my free time. Mm. And sooner I just uh, realized that uh, my skills are being polished with the time. Mm. And um, when uh, they were being polished, within like six to eight months, people started yeah. ordering me the artwork. Wow. Amazing. And uh, yeah. I hope we have some to share as well. Did you? Yeah. Come with us? Okay, yeah. So can, we'll can we share some pictures? Can we share some work of Umbra as well? All right, in a moment we'll do that. Okay, but that's fine, you know. So, so there was an artist who emerged. But you, other than that, you know, being a biotechnologist, while you were studying, you came up with the idea of synthesized diesel with mango peel and kernel. And why? And, you know, no. we've got enough diesel these days to <laughs> fuel our cars. Yeah, there are enough diesels, but that research was cost effective and time consuming. Mm. And it was uh, basically from the waste, mm. okay. organic waste, w because uh, mango peel and mango yeah. kernel is basically a waste. And we ladies so and gentlemen over here in Pakistan eat a lot yeah, of mango and yeah. I just cannot wait for the mangoes to come <laughs> in. It just needs to be a little hotter. Yes, absolutely. You know, bit of ice cube, bit of ice cream and thanda arm, beach mein chilawa. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, great. Continue. So basically, I thought that obviously we Pakistani eat a lot of mangoes and um, what if we just uh, save the waste of uh, mm. mango peel, mango yeah. kernel and we provide it to that uh, plant where biodiesel can be synthesized. Basically, I had used nanoparticles in that research yeah. of mine Amazing. and those uh, nanoparticles had uh, made that research a very time consuming research. It mm. was like done very in a very quicker way mm. and a greater yield of biodiesel was mm. produced and uh, low cost when we just took out the results we just analyzed that the whole research has been done in a very low cost okay so that's amazing and i'm going to ask the next question just just one just no, one very no. simple one and that is that you know how much of um, mango peels and kernels are actually required to produce a liter of synthesized diesel that's something i want to know um <laughs> i i i would like i would tell you Around, I guess it will one, one kg, kg, two yeah. kg. Uh, it so, will be so one, one kg mango peel and kernel is actually equivalent to one liter. But of diesel. yeah, I would tell you we we had calculated the cost. If we are going to commercialize that in our country, mm. like uh, in the real petrol or whatever, so mm. then it will be with the profit. It will cost people like twenty five rupees per liter. And that, that is was amazing. Too, I like, don't think so because mangoes are expensive too. <laughs> mangoes <laughs> are expensive. <laughs> yeah. But we eat but them and yeah, then the waste. We, we, we throw it. away the waste. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it's just about recycling and all yeah, that. Yeah, it's okay, recycling. We do have photos now, but I just want to ask, this is incredible what you've come up with. Yes. Yeah. So have you thought of what, what's happening with this kind of research and this discovery? Why hasn't, you know, you can sell this for like lots. <laughs> what, what's happening? Are you going to take it further? Uh, I have a That's plan amazing. to take it further. Okay. I would like, uh, I would wish the government to support as well as we know the situation as well. Mm -hmm. But besides, I had one more dream as well. I basically wanted to do that research prior to that biodiesel one. Mm -hmm. But due to the lack of resources in our country, I could not pursue that. And mm -hmm. that research was that I have wanted to convert the normal water into mm -hmm. Abe Zam Zam. Okay. And we yeah. had, uh, like, I had uh, researched a lot about Abe Zam Zam, that Abe Zam Zam contains a lot of nanoparticles hmm. that uh, themselves uh, like this they start working inside and hmm. they don't let any dirt inside them um. if if we inject abizamzam as well we have like uh, we have heard about so many experiences so many research of people that they drink abizamzam and uh, they take it regularly hmm. and okay. they are like 
healthier enough and okay. their diseases are cured. Okay, That's but amazing. other than we that, don't, don't label it as Abhi Zam Zam yeah. because with Abhi Zam Zam, we have got a very different relation. Yes. So you can probably name it some other water. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But now, yeah. we have to now go and look at the artwork that you've shared as well. <laughs> so let's take a look at that, she's guys. She's not only a biotechnician, she's an artist too, ladies and gentlemen. Amazing. Let's take a look at the pictures. Oh, wow, go oh, ahead. Oh, wow, very nice. And tell us about what kind of work is being done. This is calligraphy mm. of Surah Fatiha. Mm. Nice. Mm. All right. Okay. Amazing. Wow. Mosque and it's it's oil it. painting. This wow. is oil. So yeah, oil oil painting. Oh, I mean, wow. Fabulous. Yeah, so in the first semester, she thought that, you know, she can be an artist. And what is this? These are 99 names of Almighty Allah. Wow. And mm -hmm. this is also oil painting on canvas. It's a huge canvas. Yes. Amazing. And this is also oil painting. It's a portrait. Of? Of, it's an order work. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this? And this is a pencil sketch. Wow. You're very good. Yeah, I mean, look at the detail. And this was, I had uh, like uh, made uh, Qaid Azam on mm. pizza with ketchup. <coughs> really? Okay, <Yeah. laughs> wow. wow. It was all edible, yeah. It's all ketchup work. And this did, is oil Did you it. then get to eat Qaid Azam then? Oh, yeah, I had, had mashed that Because it, it was all ketchup. Okay, yeah. yeah. And these are very. That was Banjosa Lake, and this is truck oh, art. This so is. You've uh, done it. Yeah. Truck art on uh, chair and table. How long does it? Wow. And this is all mural, and it, I have done that on the uh, wall of my home. Oil? It mural. Wow, man, mural wow. work, like mixed okay, so oil, spray. Mixed, so so this is things. what I want to ask now. To be a biotechnician is not even an easy job. How do you even get time to do all of this? Time management. What I believe is mm. that uh, I I would uh, like uh, say it very openly that I'm not good in time management. Okay. But. I would believe that uh, like you should always stay positive uh, regarding everything because yeah. every person in this life face challenges, face mm -hmm. problems. So you should always see towards the positive side. You should yeah. always see towards the solution. Yeah. And you should always be thankful for what you have Absolutely. at the current moment. All and right. that gives you energy for like every uh, moment, like whatever you want to do mm. uh, in that particular time, in that area, in that space, in that condition. So these, so these are two things which we have actually talked about so you being a biotechnician, you being an artist. Now let's uh, come down to a point where you're an educationist yourself and you want to transform the ways of, you know, how we teach our kids. So what updates do you have on that, you know, uh, towards your destiny and go? Uh, regarding that, I would tell you my vision and my dream. Uh, basically, as we have observed there as well, education systems over here are basically focusing on the curriculum, mm -hmm. are focusing on like if it's about the subject, if it's about science, English, math, social studies, mm -hmm. whatever. They are basically focused to teach whatever the fact, whatever the facts, material, knowledge in that particular subject yeah. are present. And uh, when the children grow up or when their students are um, like adults and they, they are uh, like they become a good mathematician, they become a good biologist, mm. they become um, a good artist basically if they have uh, learned arts as well. But I believe that uh, children are not being taught about the values. Children are not being taught about how to handle the society around. Mm -hmm. Children are not being uh, taught like how to handle the bullying which everybody uh, like face in the school, in the college. Or children are, uh, students are not being aware of how to tackle their thoughts even. Yeah. So basically what I believe is that ke besides giving them, a, uh, besides giving them the education which is part of their curriculum, they should be trained uh, regarding how to live in. Absolutely. Sh yeah. yeah. They should be uh, told about the values. Yeah. They yeah. should be told about like how to behave if s such kind of situation comes. Okay. But, but now the thing but is, don't you think? With, don't you think that this responsibility lies with the parents, as well as the schools, but mainly with the parents? Uh, yeah, it does. But I believe that it is the responsibility of both. Okay, yeah. excellent. We can't like uh, give that whole to the parents mm. because parents nowadays are also busy in their own jobs, in their mm. own works, and they don't, they barely yeah. give time to their kids. Okay. One last thing, one last thing very quickly before we wrap up the show, and that is that quite a lot of times when we have achie high achievers mm. and, you know, people from different walks of life, they do tell us that, you know, this is what we want you know, people to live with peace and people, you know, understanding what bullying is actually and then not retaliating and whatnot. But half of the time they miss out on giving away the solution that how we are going to achieve that. So do you have solutions for that? Because you said that, you know, you should always look for a solution. Mm. Let's, let's do it. Yeah, if it's about bullying around in the school environment or anywhere, 
I would just uh, like obviously if the students, if the kids, they are, are young enough and they have an empty mind, they are mm. easy to be trained. Mm. We will train them to be positive, mm. to to be uh, like uh, to to find their own strengths mm -hmm. and to cover the outside negativity with their inner strength. Yeah. Okay, and see. that's how like they, they will be succeed in the future if they will work on their inner strengths, if they are going to just be focused upon their inner strengths and do what is positive enough. Okay. Yeah. Then they'll not be bothered about what is going around. Mm. Even if uh, like I would say that uh, we nobody is perfect. We all have the flaws mm. and people around us will bully us regarding our flaws. Mm. Yeah. But if we'll focus about our positive aspects, our strengths, and we yeah. are going to make them more uh, better yeah. and we are going to just uh, make them productive in the society, yeah. then those things wo won't matter. And then we'll come to that level where people who, wo who uh, might be bullying in the uh, past will obviously uh, like get inspired of us or will uh, take us as role model as well. Amazing. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you so much Thank for being here. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you and good luck with all of your different ventures Thank you and so I much. look forward to seeing what you Best have in well. store and we will be seeing you I'm sure in the future yeah, as sure. well. Um, but now guys that was our show for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a general chit chat about what how to prepare ourselves for Ramadan which is coming up and also just to see where the youngsters of Pakistan are at and there's some brilliant minds out there. So if there's anything you want to ask or probably say to us, please write to us on our Facebook fan page, which is with the name of... Well This Morning. On Twitter. Well This Morning without a G. On Daily Motion and YouTube. Well This Morning. And the fabulous repeat is going to be at... 11.05 p.m. this evening. Till the next time, one, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning.